Hello, everybody. Today is September 26th. I'm Adam Smith, VP of Business Development for Roco Resource Corp and co-founder of the company. I'm joined by our CEO, Richard Locke, and Andrew Ware, Principal Consulting Geologist and Qualified Person. Richard and Andrew and I are going to do a series of videos breaking down different aspects of the preliminary economic assessment that was published about a month ago. Today's focus is going to be on energy and carbon intensity for our Santa Tomas project. And the usual caveats apply. In this presentation, there will be some forward-looking statements. So it's been about a month that PA was published. It, uh, it's been very well received. Some clear improvements over the original PA were, were realized. And it's worth pointing out today that since the publication, just since the publication, just in the last month, and really for the most part, last, uh, in, in, mostly in the last week, the price of copper has moved quite significantly. In our PEA, we identified a couple of step changes in copper price and what that does for the valuation metrics. Copper has now exceeded $4.50 a pound, 12.5% change from the $4 base case copper price used in our, our models. That 12%, 12.5% change in copper prices leads to a very significant change, almost 50% change in the net present value and a significant change to the IRR and the payback period. So just that move from $4 to $4.50 copper moves the NPV of Santa Tomas from 1.48 billion up to over 2.1 billion, 2.15 billion to be exact. And it moves the IRR from 22.2% to 27.9%. So rounded moves us up to well over 2 billion and a 28% IRR. And it reduces the payback period from about 2.9 years to 2.4 uh, 2.24 years. So very significant improvement in a very short time as a consequence of flying copper prices. I will point out one more thing. I've added a line at the bottom of this slide, and that is that about 275 million tons of resource that was identified in the original resource calculation and modified in each of the PAs has not been incorporated into the mine plan. That along with some drill holes that exist outside of the current mine plan where mineralization, some very good mineralization was encountered and some opportunities to expand the resource in the southeast and the zone between the north and south zones, not to mention to the north and under the river and into Brazilis, means that some upside, significant upside remains at Santa Tomas. Enough about that though, let's get on to the topic that we're going to discuss today. If you look in the deck that's published on our, on our website, you can see those incremental changes in copper prices and what they what they do to the metrics. But on to a discussion of energy, which energy costs at Santa Tomas make up about 35% of, uh, of the costs of production. Obviously, there's some big savings to, to be had or big gains to be had if you can reduce that to that 35% cost. Uh, each one penny drop in kilowatt hour cost of, of power leads to a $40 million NPV gain. So some big opportunities there. And with that, uh, over to you, Richard, to talk about the, the general nature of the cost of capital, energy intensity and carbon intensity at Santa Tomas, as well as the number of ways that we have to, to optimize that. Thanks, Adam. Really want to highlight our location and, and the advantages that gives us. And around energy costs and carbon uh, intensity is one of, one of the crucial things. We, we have the basics of a low strip ratio, um, low elevation, proximity to port, all those things inherently will give us a lower energy cost per pound of copper and a lower carbon intensity than some other high altitude, far from port operations, even some that have to generate their own from imported fuel. We have all of these things in proximity and some of the lowest costs around the world. If you take our location on solar power, we're in the heart of the place you want to be in the Northwest Mexico. Excellent opportunity for solar power. Not something we've ex explored in intensely at the moment. Obviously, a copper mill is something that runs 24 seven. So it does present some challenges on and using solar, but something we'll definitely be looking at it in the future. The project sits right on the river. There's a 422 megawatt hydroelectric dam right there. Obviously that presents some opportunities. It's not a it's not a reservoir that runs year round. It's mainly there for flood control and provide water for irrigation. The power is generated as a consequence of that irrigation water, 
but but certainly it's right on our doorstep so that is an opportunity we're exploring one of the other key things is in i think it was 2017 trans canada built a natural gas pipeline linking up chihuahua to topolobampo then down further south this is a large 42 inch high pressure natural gas pipeline and importantly it, it pulls gas from the permian basin in texas which currently has by far the lowest cost natural gas in the world in fact it has a negative cost in the last many months so this this has really presented an opportunity to us and something we've looked at both in power generation and in and in the truck in our mining truck fleet using that so there's a big incentive for us to electrify as much of the pit as we can with electric shovels electric drills and we don't feel the technology on electric trucks is quite mature enough but certainly something that cat has supplied to a number of operations is a dual fuel truck that burns natural liquefied natural gas and diesel and as you see on the numbers here we can save 355 million liters of diesel over the life of mine which is a significant number and 390,000 liters on shovels and drill rigs so we're we're actively looking at that and if you look at uh, this is an amazing chart to me this is the price from the waha hub spot natural gas price over the last six months and it's been in negative territory for them for the majority of that time meaning that you get paid to take their gas now we obviously didn't assume this in a pea i think we assumed two dollar two dollar gas cost in the pea but the reality is right now if we were on spot gas costs we'd be getting we'd be getting paid to take the natural gas Obviously, the transportation fee of uh, a dollar or more to, to move the gas from Texas to, to Santa Tomas, but it's a phenomenal advantage. And we've, we have included a self-generation in the, in the PEA we published, but not taking advantage of some of the realities at the moment. Obviously, long term, we wouldn't expect those gas prices to stay there, but we, I would expect over the next 10 to 20 years, the Permian Basin is going to provide enormous amounts of natural gas at very competitive prices. Maybe Andrew, talk about some of the other advantages we've got by burning natural gas. Yeah, in a typical large scale porphyry copper operation, you're burning a lot of diesel and, and you're making a lot of nitrous oxide and socks, socks and socks. And by switching to a, a combination of diesel and uh, liquefied natural gas, you can really suppress a lot of those emissions and the project basically ends up with a, with a much better air quality profile. And in addition, we, we work with a major equipment supplier in Mexico who is using dual fuel trucks on projects in Mexico and it's a great success. And those other clients are extremely happy with the results, both, both in terms of cost of production and in terms of impact on emissions. This is what we've been looking at, uh, 793D, 240-ton rated haul truck. Under certain low conditions, typically high RPM and heavy load, you can replace up to 85% of the diesel burnt uh, using liquefied natural gas. On a leader to leader basis, the, the cost savings are very significant. And a typical pit, you're hauling out of the pit, high RPMs, heavy load, and, and you're saving diesel as you take that rock to the mill. It's a good option. It's a really good option. And we've just looked at the, the diesel haul trucks, right? So there's a whole fleet of diesel equipment that we could possibly look at at some point in the future. Or, you know, as technology improves and, and electric trucks, battery electric trucks are available, that that would work for us as well. So we we would take advantage of whatever the right technology was at the time of construction. I will I'll, I'll note that in the last 24 hours, uh, a major Australian mining company made a very large announcement about the electrification of its haul truck fleet in conjunction with a German truck manufacturer. That mining company wants to get not to net zero, but, but zero altogether. And Fortescue made an announcement at a, a recent mining expo about electric trucks. So there's a lot of options available in the future. Those electric trucks, for instance, are available to, to almost everybody. But I think what I take away from this discussion is that our location has some inherent advantages that, that others don't. To be located 23 kilometers from a pipeline that brings gas that's otherwise going to be flared or, or sold uh, negative costs is, is a huge advantage. And, and that situation in the Permian basis where they're flaring and selling gas for cheap in order to be able to continue pumping oil is a unique situation. Yeah, and, and that, um, just to 
orient everyone. It's only 600 miles from the Permian Basin hub to, to our site. Pipeline-wise, it's, it's very close. Yeah. So we have some inherent advantages in terms of proximity, low elevation, low strip ratio, traditional method of extracting a metallurgical methodology. And we have some unique advantages, such as the location next to the, the Topolobombo pipeline. Terrific opportunity for that, whoever's going to put Santa Tomas in, into production. Low carbon intensity is, is a consideration. Two or three projects looked at uh, side by side, all else being equal. A major mining company is going to want to know, not only do they have low energy costs, but they have a chance to have low carbon emissions relative to units of carbon production. Thank you guys for joining me. It's a unique opportunity for us to be recording these types of videos together, even though we're in Northwest US, uh, Western Canada, and Northwest Mexico. Look forward to the next video, and we will break down in the next one another aspect of the PEA. Thanks, Adam. Thanks, Andrew.